Malawi's opposition candidates on Saturday wrapped up their campaigns at rival rallies across the country ahead of Tuesday's crucial elections. In a bid to intensify his lobby, leader of Malawi's Congress Party and contender of President Peter Mutharika, Lazaro Chakwera, visited the service of Lulongwe, the country's capital, on Sunday. Fighting corruption has been his key campaign message. It has been a great campaign. We have run across this country and our message has been so well received. It's electric everywhere. We mentioned the fact that we want to change the type of leadership in this country so we can all be servants and we can unite this country that has been paralyzed and that we can all prosper together. President Mutarike's tenure of office has been marked by corruption cases. He was personally involved in a 3.9 million US dollars bribe case, an issue his rival Pastor Lazarus Chakwera promises to fight. The youth are the most energized in this election. We have mobilized the youth like you can't believe. No party has had youth conferences across this country like we have. They believe in us. They believe in our message. And they believe that the youth will prosper because we have uh, so much in store for them. Peter Mutarika, in power since 2014, is running for a second term against seven other candidates. 6.8 million Malawian voters are expected to elect their local presidents, deputies and members of parliament on May 21st. Former sprint star Usain Bolt urged South Africa's Casta Semenya to accept the rules of the International Athletics Federation on testosterone levels. Bolt spoke to AFP on the sidelines of the launch of his electric scooter brand on Wednesday. For me, that's just rules. I've said it over the years. You know what I mean? I don't make the rules. You know what I mean? I just, when he made the rules, I just follow the rules. He added that in a business world, you talk less and take more strategic decisions based on rules and regulations set. When there are regulations, I never discuss it. I just bend over and move on, he stated. The new IAF regulations, which have been in effect since last week, require that the athletes born with the sexual development differences to lower their testosterone levels below 5 nanomoles per liter of blood as treatment to enable them run in the female category over distances ranging 400 meters to 1,609 meters. A 28-year-old Olympian had challenged the IAF over his decision to restrict testosterone levels in female runners for distances between 400 meters and a mile. Semenya, who has won the last 29 of her 800-meter races, was born with intercess traits, meaning her body produces typically high levels of testosterone. Minister of State for Legal Affairs, the Honorable Ellsworth Johnson, has described claims of rights Bahamas activists who testified before the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights in Jamaica last week as baseless and unsubstantiated. Mr. Johnson responded to two officials of the group who reportedly claimed that they feel unsafe in the Bahamas. We had to advise the Commission, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, that in February of this year, they commended the Bahamas for the advancement in the facilities at the detention center. Uh, there were certain scurrilous accusations that were made. Uh, I had reason to refer to a booklet that was put out by Rights Bahamas, which uh, is, is labeled uh, Immigration Issues in the Bahamas. Rights Bahamas, any reasonable person looking through that booklet would presume that what they see occur in the Bahamas. You have a picture with a man holding a revolver with, attack, with an attack dog and with another man with a baton on his hand purport, beating somebody. You had another picture with a lady bloodied standing in the front of police officers in an aggressive manner. And I challenged them and I put them to proof to prove that those pictures or those incidents occurred in the Bahamas. No response. Now, Minister Johnson says the Attorney General's office is preparing an official response, but that the AG's initial response reflects the government's sentiments on the matter. We are a sovereign country. We are prepared to follow the laws. Uh, we also took issue with the fact that uh, some the commissioner was saying that they can tell the Bahamas what to do. Our highest court, the Privy Council, has never been so forceful in its assertion and has always been respectful toward the Bahamas. But I wait with, I wait with bated breath 
to on the response from the Attorney General. He's right that we are a sovereign country and nobody can tell us what to do. Hungary's Somalis arrive daily at this makeshift camp on the outskirts of the capital Mogadishu. Their farms have failed and their animals have died. Sheltering here is now their best chance of surviving the drought. We left our home and farms because of drought-related conditions and conflict. Our farms were hit badly by the drought. Thankfully, now we live here. Somalis are leaving rural areas in their tens of thousands to get food aid in the capital. The failure of so-called long rains, which usually sweep East Africa between March and May, has caused crop failures across the region. Aid agencies have scaled up efforts but say more support is needed. The situation in Somalia is very worrying. Uh, we're just two years on from the 2017 drought, which had a famine warning to it. We were able to avoid famine through working with partners, government, civil society, the diaspora, private sector. Uh, it really was a collective effort. The new arrivals joined two and a half million others already displaced by conflict and past droughts in Somalia. With their livelihoods destroyed, Many of the displaced will continue to stay in camps long after the drought is over. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera.